Alrighty, guys, before we jump into the podcast, support for today's episode comes from iHerb. iHerb offers the best curated selection of wellness products at the best possible value across a variety of categories such as supplements and sports nutrition. They care about what's actually inside every bottle and that makes up your morning, pre-workout, cool-down routines, and more. For a limited time, our listeners get an exclusive offer of 22% off their entire order. Go to iHerb.com and use promo code WIDEOPEN to get 22% off. That's iHerb.com, promo code WIDEOPEN for 22% off. Let's get into the podcast. Life's just uh, about finding new places to scroll Instagram reels. I hope you guys feel good. Got me up off my deathbed for this. You were deathbed? not on your deathbed. You're a little sick. I was on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> the death couch. Podcast number 69. Mm. We're back. Mm. I love oh, it's it. 69? Yeah. Damn, this we is legendary. It. We 69 and none of us will are 69 with each other, but we're 69 in the day. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> my God. That's too Come early. On. Too early for that. In the 69th <clears throat> annual podcast. You guys want to hear something funny? Yes. Love to. Horses are the number one most farted on animal. Farted on? Well, obviously. Yeah, I just had, I got a good kick out of that. It's like pretty obvious that horses yeah, are the most farted on animal ever. Behind Evan's up, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro. That's no, that's a hit cold. on Evan. That's a hit on Evan, not his girlfriend. That's cold. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, Evan's actually out of town today. His, uh, Friends back home are uh, throwing him a surprise birthday party, and the weather got really bad. And we kind of just, I mean, wanted to be there, of course, but uh, it looks like they got a keg. I, I saw know. legitimately, oh. I saw some snaps <laughs> of them in a little John boat with no motor. Um, how are we going to get the keg to the lake? Well, let's just put in the John boat and ride down the hill. Yeah. Classic. I, wow. I'm bummed because, so I was helping her kind of facilitate. More so the just surprise. the schedule of the surprise, that way Evan would be there, because obviously we're going on our RV trip. Uh, at the end of this week. So they're throwing it a week early for him. But uh, God, me telling Evan, like, you need to be home at, at, at on <laughs> by Friday. I think that kind of pissed him it off. Did, dude, it did. Because he was, was like, in a pissed off mood. And I was like, fucking not. Like, it's like, what do I do? Not let him show up to his own <laughs> birthday party? Or like, <laughs> tell like, him, like, you need to leave now. Get over. <laughs> like, you know. Dude, I'm going to get home when I get home. Yeah, yeah. He was, there's no agenda. He's like, oh, get there when I get there. <laughs> like, no, no, you got to go now. Which he still had plenty of time for. He was leaving on a Wednesday morning. He just had Florida. To, he just had to be back by Saturday. And it was just so funny because we thought he would be. But CJ's like, yo, you're going to be back by Saturday. And he's just like, not if some bullshit comes up like the way down. Yeah, because yeah. he had the worst drive down there, which I think contributed to quite a bit of stress for the drive back. I never realized Evan was uh, under such a large amount of stress. stress. Or maybe that he didn't handle stress so well. Because that drive, that drive really brought it out of him. Yeah, it brought a new side of him out that I haven't seen. That's for sure. Yeah, so we were just in Florida, and we needed to get, uh, a f we needed to make a few things happen while we're in Florida. Most of the things were covered, except how do you get our water cross snowmobile to Florida? Well, you get it, try you try to get it shipped. You know, just a classic. How do you get a snowmobile to Florida? Right. <laughs> and most of the time, on a, on a short than, notice, yeah, too. It's like short within notice. a week, we were trying to find a shipper to ship it. So no one bid on it, and... Uh, you know, we're like, Evan, you know, your job description's wide. You got to drive to Florida. We're, Add we're trucker all, to the list. As dude. in non-existent. Like, <laughs> yeah, whatever. I mean, that's what I mean. It's wide like anything we say goes. But he started making the drive while we all just are chilling at home because we fly there. We weren't and, chilling. Well, we were all working, I was gonna Mike. Say, make it sound like yeah, real assholes, yeah. Mike. Yeah. Uh, we, <laughs> just, we just had the easy way out. But you're right. The whole reason we didn't, I guess, ride with him is because it takes... Two days to drive down there, at least. Dude, I would have loved to have hopped in yeah. the truck and drove yeah, down to Florida. Yeah, I think it would have been fun. And no, yeah, honestly, I I feel like that's rather obviously it, it could be stressful to some people, but for me, you just fucking get in and go. When you have problems like Evan had, which yeah. when the deaf system goes out on your on the truck and like you leaves third you stranded, of the way through the trip. Yeah, it can be Middle stressful. Illinois. I do want to just preface though, we weren't at home chilling. Ben and yeah. I were <laughs> Ben and I were editing, so that way we could have a video for Thursday. Mike was doing designs. Ken was shipping out orders. That way they could be to your door at a timely manner. Ryan was editing the podcast. So it was kind of like, well, it's, it looks like you're going to be the guy that has to drive it, Ev. I don't right? know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm just laughing. Because I already know people are going to be like, would you make Evan do it? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're just here. Man, we're chilling. really F that one up. Um, Sorry, Ev. But, okay, um, what's, I don't understand how we have a uh, 2000. 20 truck and the deaf system which you legally have to have goes at, out at thirty thousand miles like how yeah. how is that a thing 
I think the even worse part is we're not the only ones. Uh, it seems like it's very common. So we're all at home trying to get this figured out, calling dealerships. Ken's calling everyone, like, you know. Yeah, and he was kind of a not an ideal spot. He was somewhere in Illinois. Middle um, of nowhere, it seemed. Yeah, and then basically when the system goes out, it's like you have 70 miles yeah, until it's limited five. to five miles per hour, which is like, What are you supposed right. to do? So he's calling us. He doesn't want to waste his mileage, obviously. And then we're calling around and, we put stuff up on Instagram. You guys were replying to our to our story and stuff, giving ideas. Uh, but one of our buddies, Kevin, knew a guy that had a shop not too far from there. So we ended up having him go to there, and he's uh, fixed the truck. Okay. <laughs> fixed the truck. Okay, yep. Mm-hmm. Properly. Yep. And then... Uh, so we'll, we will we'll not have that problem again. No. No. <laughs> I don't even know if you have to put any fluid well, in there anymore. Okay. <laughs> but like, I mean... Uh, maybe like, not even diesel after this. <laughs> But like Evan's got to, the whole thing, he's got to get himself to the shop with that truck somehow, but he's also got to get a rental that Ken's lining up for him. And he's also got to transfer over a snowmobile, two pit bikes, uh, yeah. two jet skis to the trailer. I, I could see how it was stressful. Oh. It definitely put a bad taste in his mouth. And yeah. you're all alone. Yeah. Like when that. you're all alone, that shit's hard, dude. Luckily they were there to help like the, the people. And I was talking to him. I was like, we need you to help. You know? Oh, I don't think on the way. That's why on the way there, they weren't like he, he's like, dude, it was the most brutal, like swap process ever. It's literally raining sideways while oh. I'm trying to unload a snowmobile into another truck. <laughs> but my favorite part is that the, the rental we got him can take from Illinois all the way down to Florida. Got to get it back though. It was a four cylinder full size <laughs> half ton pickup. Admittedly, the thing was kind of zippy <laughs> yeah. for a four yeah, cylinder. I, drove it. I didn't I think it was Can't too bad. believe they like make trucks like that. But I guess it's no different it's the than future, like, man. Ken's yeah. Bronco. It's a four cylinder. Still goes. Got a turbo, I should say. Four cylinders and fluid in your exhaust. Welcome yeah. to the future. And then, uh, yeah, Evan made it down there. We we got to Florida, and uh, he, he missed the first day, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. we were out That's filming with the Gators. If you guys haven't seen that already, that was a blast. Probably top five funnest videos or funnest video bits that we've filmed, in my opinion. Yeah. It was just, just like, I, I said it in the video, but the the YouTube videos bring us and have us do so many cool things that we would normally never have the opportunity to do solely off of uh, just the connections that we've made, or they're so outlandish, why would we ever do it? Mm-hmm. And like riding with alligators is just one of those ideas <laughs> down but some river it was so so sick the alligators were a nice touch because it, it it uh added an element of danger beyond <laughs> what it already was was because yeah. like dude it was a track for jet skis it was yeah. so much fun and you had to, it, it it was cool because there'd be like trees and stuff sticking out or like on certain banks it would be super shallow so you'd have to kind of navigate but like we were ripping it was so fun. It was like a, it's literally like riding a trail on a dirt bike or a snowmobile, but for your jet ski, instead of just having like this big open Lake. area to go to, you're just like, all right, we're driving 40 miles that way. Yeah. And it was yeah. so much fun, but I didn't realize there was jet ski guys. Like I didn't realize there's exactly. people that do that. Like the jet skiing is a sport. So like the guys that we're with, we were with literally they go jet skiing on the weekend. They trailer it to a new spot or whatever. And they go jet skiing as if it was like, we're going dirt biking on the weekend. But, like, around here, it's kind of, like, it's so different. You just kind of maybe have a jet ski, and you go tool around out in the lake to a couple circles. It's it, it's a whole nother life. Way different. And it makes sense, I mean, why so many people would be so into jet skis because that was, was fun. Blast. That was fun. I would do that again in a heartbeat. And it is pretty funny that most a lot of guys down there, they wouldn't think twice about that. Let's hit the river. Yeah, there's gators. There's gators everywhere. However, you got Gene. He's got a little <laughs> jet ski rental company. He stays in the ocean. We're like, Gene, this is your first time in the ocean? He goes, yeah, for good. Or Sorry, not in the ocean. In the river with gators? He's like, yeah, for good reason. And it'll be the last time, too. Yeah, <laughs> like, there's <laughs> more uh, alligators than you can count Yeah, in, in the in the small stretch. That is, I mean, they're left, right, left, right, couple there, couple there, swimming in, swimming out. Big, too. Mm-hmm. Like, huge. Probably See, saw, like, some 12, 15 yeah, there was some footers, big like ones. Massive, yeah. massive gators. No one got bit well, by an alligator. Dude, I, I so I was, as I was editing the video, I was like, man, I wonder actually how dangerous this was. I probably should have taken the time to like maybe do some research beforehand, but I just looked up how many people have gotten eaten or died from alligators in the last year. And there was like four people in the last year, but in oh, the last wow. like 70 years, there's been like 26. That's so low. Maybe like, not that's really 26, but I mean, in the last in 70 year. years. Yeah. Like something like so they're starting to, no, no, no. Like, like something like insanely low. Yeah. Wow. Like way less. 
yeah, than I, you would think. I think being that we pull were, that up, at, Ken, so northern, back check that. it was something very foreign to us and seemed more dangerous than it was. But like I said in the video, it's not really as dangerous as you'd think. Well, yeah. it, it looks like they're jumping in and swimming after you. They're not when they're, they're jumping in to get away from <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah, they're just getting cover. Yeah, yeah. Like I compare it. I mean, this is a bad comparison I've heard from some people, but we have snapping turtles up here and people are like, oh, you going in the water where there's a snapping turtle? I'm like, the only way you're going to get bit is if you're up in their personal space. Mm -hmm. I know alligators are a little hungrier and have bigger personal spaces, <laughs> but, uh, and bigger teeth <laughs> and bigger teeth, bigger <laughs> mouths, but you're really only going to get bit if you're like kind of up in their grill in their space. They, I don't think they corner would corner one. Let's say your jet ski died. Uh, I don't think you'd find an alligator jumping up onto your running board trying to snap your feet. Yeah, that's what I was worried yeah. about. Like, if yeah. you did, could they're so big, they could easily just come and, like, even Kinda just, like, right bite on the your side, yeah. and they're so oh, yeah. aggressive, they could just clamp on and, like, drag mm -hmm. you with them, I guess, like, the actual jet ski itself. I was like, I don't know. It just seems, like, extremely unlikely. And then after researching, that's not yeah. something that they do. So, so from 1948 to 2021... 442 people have been bitten by alligators and 26 have died. Oh, so that, that's, that's pretty nothing, low. Nothing, dude. That's so low. I'm like, I mean, how many people die from bees every year? Look or up, dogs. Or I bet dogs. you more people yeah. die from dogs. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> what right? we title our next video 30 to 50 a year. We dogs. titled the next from dogs. Like how, about, how about like dirt bees? Dirt biking with dogs. <laughs> 60, 60 deaths from bees a year. Wow. A year. Way more than alligators. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, right before we went, though. I was talking to Jet Ski Ryan, the original Jet Ski Ryan. I was like, hey, how, how dangerous is this? And he goes, no, you guys aren't really their type. They're more into, like, older <laughs> ladies right. and, like, dogs. I was like, that seems so specific. He was like, no, nah, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I think they, that is what happens when most people, like, the dog, the gator comes up, gets the dog, and then the old lady goes in the pond to try to save the dog. And then that's, that's wild, though. Like, some of these Florida men were like, if we see a gator, like, up close, I'll jump on its back. Yeah. Jeez. I was like, dude, that that just seems like a really <laughs> like, bad I don't idea. Know about that. I mean, Mike swimming in the river seemed like a really bad idea, and it wasn't even doing much, but, right. but actually I, going that, after one. That's what, like, I live my life based on statistics as far as that stuff goes like oh the my, statistics such a statistician are so low they're so low and i knew they were low not that low and so i'm like what's gonna happen it was really funny uh sid was at a baby shower so like your whole family was like why why would he swim in there like that when's he gonna cut out doing silly stuff like that oh like, they did say you that. Know? i was wondering what they were gonna say about you doing that and and Whose it really family said that like ryan's the, I, well, I mean yeah they were just they were just like <laughs> he, he's crazy like you know he's gonna get when's he gonna cut out, when's he gonna cut like out that? all that little little stunts he's doing yeah yeah and i'm just like realistically like, driving to, to grow up driving to work is like extremely more dangerous yeah apparently is yeah. it i so just what, was what did sid say about it i mean i don't she kind of understood. What? Oh, did she? Or was she like, why'd you do that? No. Honestly, no. I feel like my girlfriend or mom would have been like, why'd you do that? And then I guess you explain to them and all right. that. It just right. seemed a lot yeah. more dangerous, but, but like, I, just I can love understand that. where they're coming it's, from. It's like for planes. I, I This doesn't really help people. Like, I think we've <laughs> talked about this. doesn't help people, but I'm like, statistically, you ain't going to die. Mm. You're just not. Planes are safe. Because they are. They're safer than cars. And if you are going to die, there's nothing you can do in the back there's of the plane. There's nothing you can do about so you it. You might as well drink your free Jack Daniels <laughs> and have a good time. Yeah. Well, where we <laughs> get where we say we put, yeah, we drinks. don't get free anything. They we don't, we don't even get the seats to lean back. Yeah. Because oh, you guys were in like literally the last row. Yeah. What do you mean? Up against the wall. Every single time. Dude. There was like every wall. single time. I couldn't we, press. I couldn't go back at all. So it was just straight up. Dude, there's it's me, amazing. Ben, we're like, where, the f where are the other guys? We'd look at that them up there. Getting I, snacks and whatever else. Ken, why do you put us in the back? Just me and CJ. Every single I time. Had, I feel like it's I a hit out every on us single time. I had maybe five days to book this trip. I took what I could get, okay? But but like he's got these, you know, he has to choose. Okay, so I got five people, five spots here. Two of them are in the back. Who am I gonna put in the back? Hmm, the two guys that well, put me on a billboard. Well, let's work in a reverse <laughs> order. How about? Yeah. yeah, we'll start in the back and then uh let, I mean, it start, makes sense. Start with me and then it just goes in. Uh, I, I think it's the who's the most recent person I added to a flight. Oh, my you know, gosh. damn well, it goes in oh alphabetical order. It should be Ben, Ben, CJ, and then either Mike or Ryan. Well, one thing, like, do you guys go in and change your seat in the app? Well, up until the I last flight, I didn't even know I had a login for the app. So I guess in my defense, no, I'm still 
figuring yeah. this whole flying okay. thing Because that's like, I go in and I take myself out of like a middle seat and put myself up against okay. a window. You can do that? Yeah. Yeah, and like around. up until we started flying for Sea yeah, Boys trips, yourself anywhere. I didn't know what? that it was even an option to pick your seat. Well, no wonder we're in the back. I thought you just bought your ticket and they put you where you put you, Same. and then you could maybe do some swindling. Within maybe. reason. Yeah. Within they, reason. They put, they put you where they put you initially, and then you can pick from there like, hey, there's an open seat here. I can I can switch it. Yeah, that, That's usually sense. how it goes. And also your status, I think, helps. Like Ken's freaking triple gold platinum. He gets a free jerk. He's milking all of our shit. He's yeah. putting everything on under his uh, yeah. yeah account. That's why well, I don't have any hey, points. Wouldn't you? I don't get any points if either. If you were I just the travel the advisor, points. wouldn't you? Well, yeah, I guess. I guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got a good point. Yeah, <laughs> I would like to talk about my big moment. I was going to just bring that up. Big moment. Congrats on my that, Ryan. Moment. It's been two years coming. Oh, your jet ski moment. Yeah, you know, I Ben already forgot. I think I expected a lot more comments about you know people like oh ryan finally got the flip maybe a little selfish for me but way more people were excited about me being caught in the background of a camera shot peeing yeah (laughs) yeah people couldn't believe that and then and then they were mind blown when i left in the shot of a gopro falling off of like the jet ski and falling in that's like that's gopro at 723 somebody see that and there's like it has to be two thousand comments about that the thing that you kind of can tell in the video but not really, is I went into that with the idea that all I had to do was get the jet ski around and kind of just land. And I then, was confused that, that you even would think yeah, that. Yeah, that surprises like, me yeah, that'd to be no like, ends. You yeah. didn't want to ride away? That'd be I like, didn't even know it was possible in this time frame. Oh, wow. Like, well, I, I felt like I don't understand. Yeah, like, it'd, well, be like, it'd be like doing a backflip on a pit bike to wood chips and, and then, then just crunching it up and then every just time. Celebrating. Like yeah. Dumping it over every time. You're like, oh, you just, all you got to do is make it from here to here, just to the down. Yeah. But you went into that without intentions of riding away. I didn't know that it was going to be, I mean, not easy because it wasn't easy at all. It took me freaking two and a half hours, but. I didn't know that like even riding away from it was going to be an option on that jet ski with my skill. So yeah, I guess yeah, I was kind confused of. when you were celebrating like, yeah, it was like literally we'd <laughs> been out there for like two minutes and, I was, and we all were like, yeah, he made it around. Now he just got to ride it out. And your arm was just like, and he went, <laughs> well, cause I didn't out. know if I could do that. Was it difficult to do or did the jet ski do most of the work? Alrighty, guys, quick break in the podcast for word from today's sponsor, iHerb. iHerb offers the best curated selection of wellness products at the best possible value across a variety of categories, such as supplements and sports nutrition. They actually care what's inside every bottle that may make up your morning, pre-workout, cool-down routines, and more. For a limited time, our listeners get an exclusive offer of 22% off their entire order. Go to iHerb.com and use promo code WIDEOPEN to get 22% off. So after restarting my fitness journey to look a little bit healthier for summer, I wanted to make the most of my results in the gym. So I was looking for pre-workouts, proteins, different stuff like that. iHerb made it easy to search and find the products I needed to complement my workouts and make the most of my time that I spent in the gym. Every product that iHerb sells is stored and shipped exclusively by iHerb. So there's no third-party sellers. You get free shipping in the USA with purchases over 20 bucks. With 24 million authentic reviews and 1.3 million five-star reviews, iHerb has helped over 11 million customers find the best products for them whether you're a sports guy in the field or a fan on the couch it's time to get your health in check with iHerb our listeners get 22% off your first order when you use code wide open at iHerb.com that's 22% off your first order at iherb.com promo code wide open choose iHerb because wellness matters for most of us learning a second language in high school or college wasn't exactly a high point or a focus in our academic careers I don't remember a darn thing from my high school Spanish classes but now thanks to Babbel the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language whether you'll be traveling abroad connecting in a deeper way with family or you have some free time Babbel teaches bite-sized lessons that you'll actually use in the real world I originally started to learn Spanish but now I'm taking lessons in Italian so I can surprise my girlfriend with them we started watching a show I noticed that she liked the Italian, and I was like, I'm going to learn that. Babbel's 15-minute lessons make the perfect way to learn a new language on the go, and you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. So start your new language learning to journey today with Babbel. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash wide open. That's babbel.com slash wide open for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Back to the podcast. 
No, the jet ski 100% did most of the work. The guy that bought my old stand-up jet ski goes, yo, that's so sick that you finally got it. What did you do differently? And I was like, instead <laughs> of riding a $10,000 jet ski, I rode a $50,000 jet ski. So yeah. it made the like all the difference. I would compare it to instead of riding a bicycle being strapped to a rocket ship heading to space. Like it is literally that different. <laughs> Camry to F1 car. 440 fan to 850 boost. Now that you say that, it would have been even more impressive if you would have landed it on the other one too. Like looking back yeah. at how difficult that was, because mm -hmm. you know we're watching the videos of like these professional riders do it on these stand-up jet skis, and we're like, Ryan, you can do that. <laughs> Think about how impressed everyone would have been Dude, if you would have damn. actually done you it. You really pulled that off. You've got to have. Frick, I mean, how many attempts do you think before you landed, like, sure. total, like, over the years trying to do a backflip on a jet ski? Yeah, I'd say it's got to be a hundred. That's yeah. crazy. Wild. That's so and then <laughs> the part that was, like, so, yeah, you just explained the difference between these skis, but he's like, all right, we're going to do this, and he kind of, like, warmed you up and then sent you out there. Keep in mind, every other backflip Ryan's tried was off of a pretty decent-sized wake. It was way easier not having the power. power. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I would Less say Less intimidating? Yeah, and there was no timing because you used to have to pr time the pre-hop while you yep. were headed 10 miles an hour this way and the boat was headed this way. This, you just like did it. And then when you felt good, boop. And there still was a level of timing because we wanted you to do it right in front of us. I feel like if you didn't even have that, you could have tried it anywhere. Yeah, instead of having to make easier. the loop and whatnot, but... Yeah, it was so fun. But it was dope. I was talking to Ryan. I'm like, okay, so you did it. Now do you feel like conquered? How do you <laughs> feel about like owning another jet ski like that? He's like, I kind of still want one now. You but a real one. Oh, know? really? Yeah, I mean, it'd be sweet, but it's just as like, it's, it's way too much of a commitment to the sport. Five for me. hummers. Yeah. And so That's keep five in mind, hummers. They're I like, hardly have one hummer. It right doesn't now. have to be 50 grand, but it has to be at least 25. Yeah, dude, you know, fifty thousand dollars on a freaking jet ski is insane. Stand up jet ski that can't even go like it holds one gallon of gas. Basically, the only thing it does is backflips and yeah. tricks. It really is crazy because then you got guys building crazy sleds. I'm like, I can't believe someone's willing to put thirty grand in a snowmobile that they can only ride six months out of the year. True. But they're willing yeah. to put fifty into a jet ski. Keep different in mind, you strokes can ride for different anyway. folks. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's crazy. That's crazy. Huh. It's pretty cool. Also, that we when we were there. Uh, at Whamilton, the jet ski place. Oh, you finally got a shout <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, he did. Yeah, big when shout we were out to there, Whamilton. So Chris Anizeski is teaching Ryan. So he is number third in the world based on the Havasu Worlds competition. Pretty cool. The Jukish brothers, Gabe, is the older brother. He is number two in the world based on this competition. And then Lee Stone was there. We met him, and he's number one in the world. He's won it like 10 times. Just pretty crazy that we know the top three Jet ski, freestyle jet skiers in the world. And then me. And then <laughs> and Ryan's still my favorite. Dude, they were saying, it's nice to finally meet you because you get tagged mm -hmm. in every single jet ski video that we post. Everyone I, just always tags at Ryan Iwerks in any backflip jet ski video because now it's been such a meme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I've always <laughs> wondered like what these true professionals, it's like, congratulations, Lee Stone for winning worlds. And it's like... 50 comments of just my Ryan. name. <laughs> like he, he's had his crowning achievement for the year, and it's just me tagged in it a bunch. I'm like, what the fuck? Who is this guy? Sees me. Makes sense. Um, yeah, it was really nice to be down in Florida, but we came back home. It's a freaking blizzard, so we are leaving again. Yeah, RV we, trip. We've only been home for, what, we have like seven One days week, at home, yeah. and then now we're gearing up for another RV trip. We might be the only people to ever plan an, a two-week RV trip without planning anything that we're going to do on a two-week RV trip until like three days before we leave. Like True. we don't have anything planned. Is that I mean, stress you guys out? Yes and no. But, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, we still got to work out the fine details. Mm -hmm. I think it's so the hard. Fine, it's like if we're going to find details, we're going to travel across Every the country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, we have a, we have some things jotted down, but it's like, if we're going to travel across the country, we should probably try to, I don't even like using the word collab anymore. But yeah. try to, you know, get together with other people, whether it be a podcast or a video or just something, even just hanging out. But that is when your schedule gets demanding and and really hard. You know, you got to be with this person on this day at this time. And, and that's six hours from where you are right now. And that's tomorrow that's morning or whatever. That's where it gets crammed, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping definitely to meet up with... Uh, a handful of people. <laughs> Dude, we don't even have it planned. So I can't even tell you. <laughs> where we're we also, go, where well, are we going? Yeah, we're also planning on just kind of just having fun with the six of us. 
Yeah, it'll be good. Uh, maybe that's, seven. Maybe Gavin that's might what join our us. Plan yeah. is, that's as we're far, going to have fun. We're going to have you fun. You know, we got the details worked out. Now we're just working on the finer details. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? First, Colorado. Go see Gav. Ride some three wheelers. And I, I think, I think we go skiing. I would love that. Ken, can you ski? I haven't skied since I did something to my MCL probably ten years ago. So you can ski oh, though. You can't ski. Depends. I don't what know the, how well. Like. I think skiing would be really entertaining solely because uh, it would just be funny to get like Ken and Ryan and CJ out there. Um, <laughs> and then also on the aspect that Evan is a really good skier. So it'd be like the two polar opposites. We w- we could call it reckless skiing. We just Ooh. get after it. Yeah. But um, yeah, that'd be fun. H- has anyone talked to Gavin? No. No. Okay. We should probably text him and let him know we're coming. So right, he Gavin, hear if you're watching this podcast right now, no, reach out to us. He listens. Yeah, we'll, we'll see you on Sunday. <laughs> all right, so Colorado, then what? Then we have to go all the way to L.A. Are we? Yeah, I think. Is that? <laughs> no, is that, that is not locked in either, for sure. <laughs> we might have to. I don't really know. Man, I feel like it's just such a hike from Colorado to California. I mean, it is, but in the well, RV, yeah. it's so much easier. Yeah, we're chilling. Yeah. We got a better one this year, which will be nice. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, it's not falling apart. Going, not I, falling well, apart, but it was just rattling. Everything was freaking rattling. It was loud in there, dude. Yeah, I'd say the noise was like the noise in the motor size. Like, yeah, the 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 size of it could be bigger. We may do, but the motor. <laughs> That's just, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, just, it was pegged. pegged out the whole time. Yeah, well, it didn't help that we were pulling our yeah. our thirty five foot trailer. Loaded up to the, to the gills, dude. And yeah, then the RV was packing what eight of us. I think I saw the tow package for that was supposed to tow like a thousand pounds, which is effectively like a two place snowmobile trailer of the old one. I, I, d- I don't know what the new one is. I can't believe we put that thing through that. <laughs> yeah, like up through mountain passes, like real steep. Yeah, real stuff, not just idling around. You know what I think we you should know? do, Ryan? Maybe the R6. What should we do? You should drive your Hummer behind us. <laughs> and then when we get to the Grand Canyon, when we get there, he wouldn't get there. Okay, well, when the tow we truck get gets yours, <laughs> to the Grand Canyon, we oh yeah, send it home. Yeah, the Grand Canyon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the legalities of that is. Oh, but I'm sure it's I'm sure it's very legal. Ken, what's the what's the legalities of sending a Hummer H2 off the Grand Canyon? I'm sure it's anything like you're throwing garbage. In a national hey now. park. Yeah. Hey now. It's probably not encouraged, I think would be the best word. You know, she's not garbage. Uh, Greg Godfrey jumped a motorcycle into it. That's, well, that's true. right. I think that was like 30 years ago, but I think he got in trouble for that. Yeah, they have like an event. I think it's in Alaska. They I want to go a, to this. Yeah. They have an event where they, you know, you just show up. All you got to do is bring a car and everyone just crowds down below and watches cars launch. Hundreds of feet off of a cliff. It's the best thing ever. Can pull this up. Have you guys ever seen it? Where's the crowd for you, Ryan? So there's like a big kind (laughs) of canal, river, lake area, and then there's on the other side. It seems like they're too close. It's one of those things like however far away they are, it's not far enough. And you know, some of them like don't go well, and other one, you know, some of them only make it halfway down, kind of just crumple up, and other ones just go. That's what I want. All the way to the bottom. Gotta go, dude. The Hummer probably land on all four and just keep going, going. Oh, we've never seen such a thing. We thought it wouldn't even make it to the edge. Here we go. Look at that, dude. That was a good one. straight to the bottom. And I love they, okay, I love how they have like Dude, this would be a great thing for you. And look at the video. crowd. Oh, look at the no. crowd. Oh. Like what if All right, we got to do it with What the if Hummer? someone had like a Lamborghini and it got up to like 150 and hit the jump and landed in the crowd down there? Oh gosh. But that's what I, I love how there everyone is far enough away that is you can just kind of launch whenever like these, you know, multiple vehicles going at multiple times at different angles. There's something that just brings people together like Destruction, destruction of vehicles yeah. no kidding but yeah i've always really wanted to go to this except for it's on the fourth of july which oh. is like a sacred holiday around here yeah oh, yeah right. it's like half the reason we live here we could just we just need a big hole we could do this at anywhere around here at well this is pretty much what we do yeah i was gonna say the uh we just need a bigger <laughs> the wall around our oh pond. it's got like it's on a track Oh, is it? That's interesting. Yeah, so it's on like almost like a railroad <laughs> single track in the middle, and it makes sure it hits the jump. That makes sense. Because I was like, there's no way they got people just diving out of all these cars. I yeah, can't I don't believe know. people are in here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got to go to Alaska. Yeah, I would sure love to. Go to Alaska. Never been. 
<clears throat> that was a 1320 video, dude. I just found out that 1320 was the amount of feet that a quarter mile is. Like, I just found that out like two days that ago. That makes really? sense. And I'm dude. like, yeah, I'm like, okay, that. I see why it's they named the from. channel that now. Makes way more Isn't sense. that what Cletus came out of? Yeah, yep. I used to yep. work for him. Really? All right, so anyway, Colorado to California. That's all we got planned. No, 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 we, no. Got, we got more. You're downplaying this so hard. Have you checked the notes document that I made? Yeah, they are extremely vague. Well, no, I it's almost I day can't. by day planned out for how little we know. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not just going to be like, oh, great. I think filet we- at 1230. <laughs> <laughs> 15 minutes to eat. 15 minutes to eat. And if we're not <laughs> on my, that, I just turned into like psycho road driver of, dad. Uh, a school trip, though. Like, you know, when we take the bus down to Florida, that's about how it is. Yeah. All right. From 12 to 1, we're eating. Planned. You guys took a bus down to Florida? Yeah, for the band trip. Really? You went yeah. on a band trip? Yeah, yeah. We played band at... Disney World. Hey, really? Yeah. I could just see Mike on that bus just cheesing, just <laughs> looking out the window. <laughs> that was a good time. Yeah, I, I actually bet. remember on the bus, uh, some kids were uh, using chewing tobacco. <gasps> so they, no joke, got, well, they got snitched on. Damn. So, bummer there. <laughs> Who but, was it? Uh, <laughs> who's it? Who's a tattletale? Mike's like me, of but, course. Dude, I honestly think one of the tattletales was the bus driver because there was a bed back there. So there was two drivers. So they'd switch back and forth. And so <laughs> we were in the back of the bus, you know, just chatting and and they were chewing tobacco so they got kicked off the well like they got sent home no way and they, their parents had to fly them home damn so they, i'd be they, like and keep in mind this happened like 25 hours into the 33 hour trip so no. they just got, had to fly back home and ride on a bus for you nothing. had to sleep on the bus yeah that was yeah i think they part. just drive like straight through straight through yeah I, I, that sounds terrible honestly yeah. don't think i could do it my no way dude I couldn't have done that even back then. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, that doesn't fun. sound that bad. Yeah. I guess. Kind of but it just, is funny. Yeah, you're just like chilling with your homies. Buses? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that part sounds fun, but after 28 hours, well, yeah. I'd rather drive in a pickup. So yeah, Speaking funny. of doing long drives. What's a long drive? Well, yeah. just the drive I made <laughs> yesterday. I'm kind of oh. a trucker now. I drove eight hours. Oh, yeah. Or was it nine? I drove nine hours. I'm proud of you. You did good. It's for a good cause. In, in one day, just to, so, so probably four and a half hours. To Wisconsin, and then we spent 20 minutes surprising uh, the giveaway winner with the snowmobile. He was electric. Yeah, it was totally worth it. Probably um, the most excited I've ever seen anyone. Yeah, he took, took his, his shirt, shirt off, off pulled his pants down, started helicoptering his dick. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Jumping up like, and down. <laughs> oh, he was crying. It was the strangest <laughs> thing, but it was it was lit. Like it was great content. And then we got back in the truck and. I drove four and a half ho- hours back home. It just reminded me, though, that you're talking about doing drives. Riding a pickup, not bad, when there's only four guys in it. No. <clears throat> yeah, so we're relatively uh, in the planning process still, but I definitely, <laughs> I w- uh, if I were on the West Coast um, and you're listening to this and you have anything in mind that you think that we should do, um, comment it. We'll, we'll try to read through them and, and add stuff to the list as we go, but maybe thinking about riding some pit bikes down the Vegas strip, which would be like pretty surreal. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that would be so cool. That would be sick. Yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know if he was saying the Vegas strip. I, oh, this but, guy that I met in Vegas last time, he was a waiter. Uh, he gave me his number. I was like, yo, if you guys want to ride some pitters, like we go in like the undergrounds of Vegas oh, and like, underground. And, oh, like really? I looked it up and oh. dude, I mean, the undergrounds of Vegas look scary. <laughs> I mean, like I wasn't, scary. I was like, you know, concerned going into Slab City, and I, I feel like I probably handled it pretty well. Mm-hmm. The undergrounds of Vegas look sketch. There's like people doing drugs and stuff down there. Just like this whole nother like society. It looked like I don't know. Just look it up on YouTube. But you think it would piss them off riding really loud? Well, that's what I'm thinking. You line? come pulling down there. Blah! And, you're, and then it's like dark down there, dude. It's like dark. Like, What's going on? It's weird. Like, what well, is I the undergrounds if, of Vegas for? Yeah, like, I, I don't even know. know that was a thing. I, I don't know. I think there's maybe storm like, drains. Maybe for storm drains. Yeah, that's it's what it looks like. Maybe look it up, Ken. Just pull it up so we can look. But I guess you know, the idea it, sounded the idea sounded great. And then I <laughs> like for some reason saw a video of it. and I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that anymore. <laughs> you know me. I just love really scary places out of my comfort zone. 
I did so well in Slab City. <laughs> yeah, you did make a lot. <laughs> that of was friends. just another one of those things too, like riding with Gators, going to Slab City. It sounds crazier, and then when you're actually in it, you're like, oh, this isn't, mm-hmm. yeah, this isn't that wild. Yeah. Like most things, when you do it, you're like, oh, it's yeah. not that bad. Yeah, maybe we should go down. But that side. one was still like me and CJ were like, what are you talking about? This is just fine. And even in the moment, you guys were not feeling it at all. Yeah, it was pretty scary. Well, not even scary. It wasn't scary. It was Slab uncomfortable. City? Well, you guys clown me for wanting to like live there. <laughs> Everywhere, <laughs> oh, Michael would love this place. Yeah, and Mike wasn't freaking out. It was just on the ground. Ken and Ken Ryan. And Ryan. Oh, but yeah, dude. I I mean, I'm honestly good though on Slab City. Like, I I don't. There's nothing else that they could that they could offer that we haven't already experienced. I'd say, but I think it'd be cool to go back to Slab City and bring stuff. Yeah, I oh, want to yeah, give some supplies. Yeah, I like that. They don't care about money. What they want is some booze, cigarettes, water, water, weed. They don't it's do just vapes. No there. actual necessities. <laughs> we can so necessities. Yeah. Everything City. except for vape. Some food. <laughs> Trying to put an end no, to they it. No, they don't. They don't smoke vapes out there. You know Probably who else not. doesn't smoke vapes? Us. Well, I thought it would be Ken after the billboard, but I learned that it made absolutely no change. He's a tough cookie to crack. Yeah. Vape. Like I said, I thought. Not I honestly, I thought that it would do it. Maybe we gotta instead of the billboard, we gotta get him in rehab. <laughs> Rehab? I've, I'm not doing your rehab bullshit. <laughs> Ken, that's what they all say. <laughs> <laughs> Said every person to rehab, yeah, going I'm to rehab ever. Rehab bullshit. I don't need rehab. That's Honestly, what they all say. Ken, the first step. You hate the vape jokes and content so much. I figured that would just be your final straw to be like, all right, I'm done. I, I feel like the more you try and push me to do something, the l- more I'm going to resist and just say, oh, fuck it. Believe see, me, we this know. is what I was yeah. saying. If you want Ken to do something, tell him to do the opposite of it, and he will do what you want him to. It's basically just a mind game. You think <laughs> so like we if you're surprise like, him with vapes? Hey, Ken, don't pick up that empty bottle on the floor there. Don't put it in the trash either. Then he'll pick it up and put it in the trash. <laughs> You gotta just play Good old fashioned yeah. reverse psychology. Yeah, it's reverse psychology. So tell him, Ken, we love it when you vape. Can I buy you some more? You know, I'm not really feeling this anymore. Yeah, I don't want you vape. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> here's the yeah, you here's how you get him to quit. You guys start vaping with him and he's like, Ah, you're cramping my style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quit. That would do it. Listen, guys, there can only be so many vapors in this crew. Yeah, the billboard was a lot of fun. Um, kind of learning that it doesn't cost for what for what we get out of it, <laughs> it doesn't cost all that much to rent a local billboard in town. Yeah, it's and all it, right off too. And you know, as long as it's somewhat appropriate, you know, like you can't cross. There's some lines it can't cross. They'll do it and they'll yeah, put it up. Twelve hundred bucks, like, pretty good. Whatever, plaster it up or however that works. Yeah, can we talk about just like the whole process behind that? Yeah, I didn't realize how much work went in it's behind the scenes for you guys on that. Well, because I was one of the people who got surprised. You three were in on it. Yeah, so I've had that idea in my notes for a while. It wasn't necessarily Ken. It was just like, what could we put on a billboard for years, actually? And uh, initially, I was going to, I want to do it on the electronic one that goes by, it just like flips through them. But I started thinking about that's, that shit's lame. Hit the same. That's not the same. Yeah. Like a couple months ago, I just started looking up Newman signs and just gave him a call and asked how much it would be to, you know, get a billboard. And they told me 1200 bucks. I was expecting like 10 grand. When they said 1200 I I was like, <laughs> Eyes lit up, went over, told Ben, and then we just started plotting, like, what'd be something good to put on it? Who's going to be the victim? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, we. I guess we just didn't know, like, how savage to go with it. We well, you were limited, too, because, like... It's a public billboard. It's a right. public billboard. Yeah. Like, you can Kids only go... It, you can yeah. only do so much on a, you know... But a vaping billboard... You know, it's it's like good cause to somebody yeah, who exactly. does Anti-vaping. Who, who, yeah, like an anti-vaping. It's, you know... Makes sense, and we just knew that yep. was Ken's <laughs> trigger spot. The right, and it, it flowed really well with the hypnotist, which I think the billboard might have been scheduled before the hypnotist. Damn. So it, was, it all just storylined really nice. Yeah. yeah, it did. And it looks professional, too, because we kind of, like, drew it up, and here's where we want this, here's what we want to say, and Mike went in there and, and put his graphic design touch on it, and we were like, oh, my God, this is like a full-on, this is a Perfect. real billboard. Well, the guy that I, I sent it to, he did hit me up. When after I sent it, he was like, I don't know if we can run this. And then this c- kind of seems like a hit piece out on Ken, yada, yada. 
And then I just was like, I just sent back this like really long thing. I was like, oh no, no, no. He he's all he's all in on it. He he thinks it's funny. You know, this has been a long thing coming and uh this is all for content and he he knows it's going down. When in reality Ken didn't. And then I was like, <laughs> just run just run the billboard. Bunch of lies. We were gonna have <laughs> Have him call and put like me on. Hello, this is Ken. Yeah, I, I was worried he was gonna ask. Well, can I just talk to Ken? I was. That's why I was like, okay, Ben, be ready. I'm gonna send him over your way. I th I think it was pretty smooth and and seamless. Yeah. And, and then we figured out the last thing Ken wants to do is go to rehab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was really what scared him. Best he really part showed his goes, cards there. What do you think? I'm fucking blind. <laughs> Not fucking blind, CJ. And we're like, oh shit, okay, he saw. It. He's just not really giving us reaction. And then he finally sees the billboard. He's like, Jesus! <laughs> he was right in front the whole time. Can't so make it's it like up. You, you, when do you re like notice a billboard? I you get so blind to all these billboards out there. You just focus on other things, and it's just like that's a accessory on the side. You don't even like. Realize I agree. It's there. I agree, hundred percent. So yeah. it's probably not too big of a deal having it on the billboard. Oh, I my phone has been blown up. Really? That's probably from the video rather than the billboard. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Uh, but still, like, I get texts from all the local people. Hey, hey, nice billboard. Yeah, I'm sure there's just plenty of that in general. I did sure. get a couple texts uh, from friends and, like, mainly oh parents uh, that have kids that watch our videos. And uh, let me let me read it, actually, because it, it, was, it was good. And, Ken, I think you're a part of a, a bigger cause that you're, you should be proud of. You're sacrificing yourself to save the young and up-and-coming. Unwillingly. <laughs> well, Ken, sometimes doing a good deed isn't isn't by choice. The sign for Ken is actually a great message for your core followers, my son. Your followers really look up to you guys, and they see vaping is not cool. Thank you. I know Ken. I know Ken, and I'm sure he doesn't like it, but it sends a good message. I yeah, think it's it is funny though because there's like such a wave. It's a positive message. Mm -hmm. There's been such a wave of like everyone was smoking cigarettes, and then cigarettes became not cool. And if you were smoking darts, people thought it was gross. And now everyone is smoking vapes. And I think that there's going to be a wave of people being like, oh, my gosh, don't put those chemicals in your yeah. body more than there already is. And and smoking vapes isn't going to be cool. I've been saying it forever. I mean, it is funny. We kind of are on the forefront. And there's been like <laughs> like uh, certain things, especially with like the robot dick story like that went viral. I'm leading a revolution. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Against Ken's will. You know, and I'm trying to save his life. I'm confused. Well, I'm not confused because I know you're addicted, but you hate it so much, but you're still not willing to quit. Like, doesn't hate vaping. He loves it. No, you, he hates that we make like a joke oh, out of yeah. it. Yeah. Because after the the billboard incident, you were so mad. I I got mad because I couldn't sleep that night because my phone was <laughs> fucking blowing up. I was like, I couldn't go to bed and then somehow kids if you you can block people on your phone but if they facetime you it still goes through so i could not sleep i don't know night. why you didn't just put it on airplane mode i i don't know i i got so sick of it and i was just i couldn't sleep that night and it was just like fuck this thing has did, to go down did you ever <laughs> consider hmm, maybe i should just stop I'm, i mean yeah you should start <laughs> answering to say i stopped i quit i, I quit, quit calling quit. they go oh That'd okay really well great fun. uh Hangs up nice right away. Just people in general, when they call you, it just gets really old. When, oh, I'm sure. When you're getting 500 calls a day, it's just like, I, I can't. To be fair, you were kind of getting some calls. I mean, yeah, it just totally, not, totally not on, blew this out this, of the water. This is a different level. Luckily, though, though you know, calls. you've changed your number now, so everyone can quit calling. Mm -hmm. that, well, I mean, they can call it if they want, but it's not going to go through. and uh, just goes like a beep, beep, beep. But I do feel bad for some of the innocent bystanders that were affected in this situation because <laughs> apparently some of the viewers are dyslexic and they <laughs> dialed the number wrong. And this one guy was getting blown up because you guys were calling the wrong number. And he was like messaging me. Take the video He's down. fucking messaging our family members like, please, can you get a hold of them? Like, take the YouTube video down. We're like, dude, the video ain't coming down. Like. I didn't, we didn't put your specific number. Like I can't control that people are dialing the wrong number and calling you. I mean, yeah, it sucks. I'm sorry, but it'll die down in a little bit. Just like let it pass. Yeah. I ended up messaging the guy back saying, dude, I'm sorry. This sucks, <laughs> but the video is not coming down. So I can't really help you. Also, it's not your phone number. So, so it's not like yeah. you did anything wrong there. 
And I was like, maybe try blocking it. And he was like, I can't blocking it. I can't block it. I need it for work. And I was like, oh, all fuck. right, that, that Dude, does actually suck. I mean, but I don't really see a difference, though, if you think about it. Like, imagine we ran a commercial on TV and it was like, call my electrician service. Mm -hmm. Granted, there probably wouldn't be so a many. major wave of people trying to call it. Like, if they dial the wrong number and call you, it's like, what? You, hey, take your commercial down. Quit advertising for your business. You know, it's like... Yeah. My grandma's phone number was one number off from the Fargo Dome, which is like a concert oh, wow. venue. So whenever there'd be a new concert, you know, people are frantically trying to dial through because you apparently you used to, have to yeah. buy concert yeah, tickets right. over the phone. So her phone on like concert days, like it would start ringing. And then she used to be really nice and go, oh no, this is Judy. And would explain <laughs> the whole situation. And they'd be like, okay. And then by the end of it after, you know, I mean, years of it, she would be like, oh, concerts released you know on friday i'm gonna just take my phone off the hook and just wow would have to i was just part of life huh. but I yeah just i get mean, a new number i think taking a video down for us is like the ultimate pulling teeth you know uh, i'm just saying like it just wasn't yeah, a valid a lot of reason things that we do and we're not taking the video like down. if i somehow fucked up and didn't put ken's number and put his, his number, number there i would have totally put it wrong. down so quick because mm -hmm. i've been like damn that's like that's got to be somewhat against the law <laughs> yeah but like i mean dude i'm sorry and, like, I'm sure it's died down because he quit complaining now. I said, dude, it seems really bad right now, but, like, I guarantee it's going to it's gonna stop. <laughs> yeah. it's gonna it's not going to stop, but it's going to get better. And yeah. eh, he hasn't said anything since. Yeah, I mean, because, like, videos just kind of plat. Like, they, they will be on the rise, but eventually they kind of, like, mm -hmm. start plateauing off. So, I mean, the amount of people that are going to call them is going to be much yeah. less. If they even happen to randomly... <laughs> misdial mis number. his number you know there's so many numbers you could misdial i wonder how, how many he got because i feel like ken especially is pretty calloused you know if he gets like 50 phone calls in a day that are wrong numbers like oh quiet day but like i wonder if this guy got 10 and it, freaked yeah, out about that I'm sure. or if he got or if he really did get a lot he was saying hundreds and hundreds and I was really? like, I just have a hard time believing that that, that many, many people, people would mess up. Yeah, the it's same clear as day. But there. we also didn't hear from anyone else. Yeah, yeah. nobody else Only reached out. Him. Yeah, nobody else said, "Hey, there was I, a have a num I have a number up. one off somewhere." It was just him. So I don't know. T to be fair, too, Ken, honestly, wouldn't have put your number up there if you already didn't have your number leaked. It was like you were already considering getting a new phone number, so it was just like, eh, this is so much funnier now, too, if we just actually put the final nail in the coffin, <laughs> you know? It was just so, like, to a very large extent, which is part of why it's funny. You're a trooper, Ken. <clears throat> yeah, I don't agree, but <laughs> I can't change your decisions. So it feels like it's been up for so long, and it's only a been week. up for ten days. Yeah, um, like out of thirty, dude. I, not yeah, that was week. one of the more exciting things that it was like it, being there and getting to see that finally happen. That was pretty fun. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, so many people have reached out too, saying this is by far the funniest thing you guys. Yeah, have ever done. a lot of people really are loving it. And it's great advertising. I feel like there's something yeah. in in a small town like Fargo that we put it up in. When they see your name or your business on a billboard, they're like, they made it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they made it. They're doing it. And you don't even have to be home. You don't have to drive by it or anything like that. So that's good. Oh, like Ken doesn't have to yeah, drive Ken by it? Yeah, Ken doesn't have to look it? at it or anything like that. So that's good. I still get pictures of it every day. Do you? <laughs> by who? All the all the local people that we know that are, live in Fargo in they the winter. They probably love it, dude. Yeah, that's got to be awesome. Like it, it's like, a new person every day. They're probably like, dude, this is so funny. I wish people thought of me. I wish people even said anything to me. No one says anything to me. Yeah. I look at my phone like, oh, dude, yeah, you texted dude, me. You got Nobody. people like, Nobody. They're, they're going to the billboard to take pictures with it. Like, you know, those brick walls with the wings that girls go. And it's like that. I've gotten a handful, you know, I'm just I love been saving them, and they're like, got a picture next to the Ken billboard. Oh, really? Start yeah. saving all of yeah, them, because we could maybe put them at the end of the video. I was hoping that it'd be more of like a like a touristy spot of people in town. A stopping cultural attraction. I think it is. Us. I, yeah. I'd assume. Oh, it is. Ben, have you been uh, doing any investing lately? Um, yeah, I actually just invested in a bank. <laughs> <laughs> Ben put his money in the bank. He quit investing and fucking banks crashed. It's, like, it's called Silicon Valley. Unbelievable. Yes, it is. Yeah, Why? That's worthless now. Oh? They're gone. What? So, Ken, I've seen this all over Twitter. Basically, what happened is this bank, something happened. Can you give us like a 10-second spark notes on what happened to this bank? Uh, it was kind of like this venture capitalist guy. He said this bank, they have liquidity problems. 
told all his like venture capital, like companies, Hey, pull all your money out of this bank. And they were like a big, they invested into like startups and like tech stuff in Silicon Valley and like the East coast. So then they pull all their money out. Other people catch wind that, Oh, they're pulling their money out. I should pull my money out. It was just a classic bank run. And then they, everyone starts pulling their money out and they don't have any money left to give you. So it was kind of like, dude, how does that work? They were the second, they were the second biggest bank in the United States. Really? No, no, it was like top, I think top 15. Still, but I I don't know. Huge still. But so it was literally just a rumor. Like one guy was just like, yo, that bank, I don't know about that. (laughs) And then it literally shut the whole thing down. It, It seems like that's the, that's the whole story. I mean, they had, they put their money into like, treasury bills which were locked up for so many years in the future and they just couldn't get enough money to to give to people when they wanted to pull their money out yeah so the way that i understand it in layman's terms basically when the bank takes your money you put 100 bucks in it's like the south park bit then they take the money and then they invest it to make money on your money so they don't actually have it like sitting in the vault Right. Or they, they borrow to like, other people. They have to keep at least 10 cents on every dollar. They typically keep more than that. That's crazy. That's low, in my opinion. Yeah, 10 having 10%. On, yeah. You only got 10% of the cash that you are owed, that you owe people. But they it's don't expect you to pull it out. Like, there's, they have more than that, but it's like they're regulated. They have to keep a minimum of that much on hand. All I got to say is if I went to the bank to take my money out because I was scared, or even if I wasn't scared. Or because you they, don't believe in banks. And they told me you can't have your money because we don't I'd have it. Livid, I bro. would be stressing. And imagine taking it from the relatively small number we have in our bank account. That's like FD, FDA, FDIC insured yep. or whatever. But yep. if you're over 250 grand, none of that is insured. So it's effectively Damn. lost. Like it's just gone. It's not worth anything if the bank goes under. I mean, I think they can do like bank buyouts and stuff like that. Yeah, that's but, what I've heard. Yeah. So what are people doing? People that were scheduled, they were going to get paid on Friday. Those checks didn't go out because the bank, the bank got taken over by the FDIC. It's like that that bank doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> so the then they're fuck? supposedly going to open up a new one on Monday, like with all those deposit accounts, and they can get things going again and try and get everything cleared out. All these people that they their business is based in this bank, they get paid from this bank. <clears throat> it's just gone. I did see this thing on Twitter, so I don't know if it's really real or not, but you couldn't withdraw your money, but you could spend it, you know, on like from the debit card. So this guy said they were paying, they were putting as much money as they could in the Starbucks gift cards what? because they said that Starbucks was more stable than their bank. In worst case, they had a shit ton of money tied up in Starbucks and they could sell it. Basically, oh. you would sell your gift cards and be like, listen, I got a $50 gift card to Starbucks, you know. Or you probably do God, it in more that's larger be a batch. Fucking hassle, dude. Could you imagine though? They Trying literally to sell said that gift cards. That Starbucks was more stable than their bank. <laughs> well, dude, we and we. I think we talked about it before, but Starbucks is a bit of a bank itself, mm-hmm. which kind of blows my mind. You know, people load the money and maybe not tangible gift cards, but they load their money into the app, and then Starbucks does the same thing with the money as the banks do. I mean, not necessarily giving yeah, them loans, but investing. Right, it's just so it, crazy. Yeah. Also, just be crazy. Yeah, let's just say you got twenty five grand and you just put. 20 of it in the Starbucks gift cards. It's a lot of stars. Have coffee for the rest it's of your a life. a lot of stars. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even longer. Dude, that's crazy, though. That's uh, that's like 1929, right? Right before the Great Depression. Yeah. Wasn't wasn't everyone, when the stock market crashed, everyone uh, yeah. was going to the yeah, banks and trying to withdraw. Yeah. Did that happen in 2008, too? I don't think that happened in 08. I think it was mostly in the 20s. Dude, Interesting. I've been seeing more and more stuff about people talking about the the world, I guess the United States and life pre-2009, 2008, 2009 crash. And I'm mm-hmm. like, it really is weird to think about. A life changed a lot after 9-11, but also that stock market crash and all that in 2009, Housing, yeah. it, it really did change the way the top, top 1% of the 1% like are trying to control. Before it was like everyone was kind of doing their own thing, but now it's like... It really is. I don't care how many Americans I'm screwing over as long as I'm still getting rich and as long as I will be safe if that ever happens again. I don't, it's just weird. I don't know. I think that's been happening since the beginning of time is the rich get richer. Well, right. But I just think poorer. it was different before then. Because like, we the thing kids, is, if you're like a rich dude and the housing market crashes and you got all this money and you're versus someone who is maybe normal and, you know, doesn't have a bunch of excess money. The housing market's now super cheap. You can buy a bunch of houses super cheap. They start buying them, and then it goes back up eventually, and they own all this stuff, you know? It's just money. a cycle, and it just does it all over again. Eat or get eaten. 
Yeah. You know, it's, Which is unfortunate. But. It is, yeah, but that's just kind of how it works. It was interesting to hear Steve talk about it like that. And he's like, yeah, no, it's it's just like the way of the world. It's been, I think it's been like that since, uh, I since mean, ever. even since ever, even before there was money and stuff like that. If you were the strongest guy in the village, you got, got to do what you women. want. Yeah, you got all the women. And if you... <laughs> That was killed that, everybody yeah. else to protect your position. You That's know? what I remember learning about that in school is more of a government thing, but like uh, just big stick go- government. That's what they called it. And so whoever has the biggest stick right. is mm-hmm. the most powerful government. I'm just like, that's crazy. Yeah, big stick. Yeah, we got more money, bigger army. Your country is now ours. Damn. So Evan's got quite a leg up. <laughs> oh, huh? that kind of stick. <laughs> no, he just walks into a country, farts. <laughs> Clear him out. <laughs> Like a gas bomb. <laughs> Dude, that's the only thing I'm not looking forward to for this RV trip is Evan being in that thing. Sticky Dude, boy. oh my gosh. <laughs> We're going to have to keep a window open at all times and then a window in the back so it can just keep flushing it's out. It's a constant breeze. Yeah, the dude's got some some absolute firepower. Is there such a thing as grip? having like a chronic farting problem? Like chronic gas. I'm sure. It's got to be something. <laughs> IBS? I don't know if he, if I'd go as far as to say, you know, possibly he he has something wrong with him. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just his diet. I think maybe some of that vape smoke maybe comes out the other end. Yeah, it's it stored down there. And for sure. Well, he said uh, back in his asbestos days, it was a lot worse because he was just eating gas station food. Um, so it's toned down a little bit now, which is mind-boggling to me. Mind-boggling to me. And then I think the uh, driving down to... Florida, put him back in his old ways of just gas station, gas station, gas station. He got there and his body was like, oh, man. Dude, yeah, Mike had to sleep with him in a room. It wasn't too bad, but he just lets him rip all the time. And then I to- I just told him, I don't care if you fart, but you just got to be courteous about it. And so then he <laughs> started doing the Mike, you sound like, like my girlfriend. Because <laughs> like, I knew it was going to happen. So then he would like, you know, get himself off the bed kind of hang off or or open the door to the outside and really he would that. get up even yeah just and i was like, like appreciate outside. that man appreciate that because <laughs> it's gonna yeah, be tough sleeping like, when we left the trees above like the the door to come in They're and like out brown, they were like yeah starting to drooping, die yeah. <laughs> dropping leaves i think all dry. luckily for me as long as dude i mean i would say literally like half as far as smell just like anyone else and sometimes that that number goes up and down, dude. That's but a gamble I, I'm not willing to take. I still it's think sewage. that farts are really funny. So when he really? farts, yeah, you'd laugh. I laugh <laughs> like every time. Just encourages well, him a little bit. Yeah, and Ben <laughs> does the same you. thing. Ben probably farts like second most, I would uh-huh. say. And every time Ben farts, I laugh. I'm far behind. Think it's funny. Yeah, far, far behind. But, far behind. <laughs> but it's just I just laugh every time. So it really can't bother me if I find it funny. If it stinks though. Then I'm just like, oh, I got to leave because I, I got a weak stomach nowadays. Then he's All like, right. what? What? And we're like, what do you mean what, dude? You don't smell this? It's only I, what, yeah, when it's stinky, it's a problem. I think it boils down to, to the diet, man. And I, w- I was just talking with Alex on the way over here because I was like, man, I need to lose some weight. Like, obviously, I'm not like mm-hmm. overweight, but I just want to get in better shape. Like, I've got weight in my cheeks. So anyways, I've been tr- going on this diet. And by diet, I'm just trying not to eat as much shit. I'm cutting out, like, the unnecessary drinking. And I've already shaved off nine pounds in two weeks. Well, I've been with you for two weeks, and there's been some unnecessary drinking. As I said, I'm trying. But anyways, <laughs> moral of the story okay. here. Okay. Moral of the story. Alex and I were talking because we were on the way over here. I was like, it's really hard to eat healthy around here, you know? Um, Bar food. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Unless you're, like, cooking. Um, what if we got a chef around here? Dude, I've been saying that. We don't have a kitchen, though. Yeah, but I feel like it's enough. Like, so first they, line they don't is, need to be how here. much does a chef That's what cost. I was wondering. You gotta That's look that wondering. up first. But they'd just like maybe That's come. You just they just employee. come here. Maybe some other shit's already like chopped up and everything, and then they just put it together. But then like, not who's only, chopping it up, Evan? No, like the chef, <laughs> Hello dude. Fresh. But my point, they come in here, they start feeding us better. I'm losing weight. You're losing weight, Ben. We all know you need it, and. Then Evans farts all of a sudden, non-existent. Utopia. Or maybe he's maybe he's <laughs> farting. <laughs> maybe he's just farting clean, pure air. Is this CJ's like fucking vision of a perfect city with cars flying and shit like that. 
<laughs> Dude, honestly, maybe they're his farts. His farts start smelling good. Fuck. I don't. I'm just the thing that worries me is okay. So let's say we got like some spinach, asparagus, and salmon. I, I ain't eating that <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, not gonna like that. Sorry, wait. You don't like? No, I love salmon, but this oh. asparagus and spinach. Ryan, do you ever eat vegetables? Bro, asparagus mm. is so buttered. Asparagus is like one of the best tasting vegetables ever. Obviously, it's an opinion, but uh. I feel like if Evan ate that meal, he'd have some gnarly farts. That's and, and that's you start just feeding them even healthier, and they just get worse. But yeah, then his body just, doesn't know what to do. I don't even know. Yeah, he's like got a he hearty steak and a, some sweet potatoes, and then <laughs> some green bed beans. Ridden. Really sick. <laughs> yeah, it's taken to the ridden. hospital. They're like, let's just pump some shit into him, <laughs> like some shit food. <laughs> no, no, get some McDonald's in here. Shit in backwards. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, quick, wait. quick, quick, get the backup vape. They, come in with they got an IV vapes. with it. It's like going straight into this. Um, I mean, so, honestly, though, I feel like maybe there's a, like if we hired Slim, you know, he has other things he can do and then he can also cook. You know, maybe, maybe I, think somebody Slim, that can also cook. I think Slim would be cooking some fantastic food. But I don't know if it'd be healthy. Matt, you are probably right about that. We need a chef that's also talented in we other need areas. Dialed. That's Think what I'm how saying. Think how much time I, we'd save. We wouldn't be going out to eat all the time. Mm. No, I know. But it, that's what I was thinking. Like Ken's like, yo, I have 9,000 shirts to fold. Um, and then we're like, sorry, man. But supper's ready. We said no. I'm just. Oh, you're saying that it, as me. opposed to hiring a teenage boy for ten dollars an hour to fold t-shirts. Uh, I mean, we have done that for Ken. Not quite saying that, but yeah. Dude, honestly, though, back to the farting thing. I've never been big on both, like, in, in high school, you know, guys would fart or they'd burp. <laughs> never yeah, burping so gross. Yeah, never yeah. really like, been anything that I ever thought was funny. I was, I was like, oh. Mm. Like, Dude. if you're deliberately belching, like, like it's fine. Everyone's got to burp. Everyone's got to fart. But, like, you're at, an, at a dinner. People are eating around you, and you just go, Bleh. Like that like, guy like, at beat ups Yeah. Dude, that shit pissed me off. Mm-hmm. He did it multiple times too. You guys didn't even. See, you guys weren't there, but we were in Chicago. We're oh, sitting yeah. there at at B Dubs trying to get get a meal the night before. There's this guy sitting there. He's got his girl, and uh, he's just talking loud, whatever. And he's like, two shots, two shots. He's like ordering shots, and then like putting them on. He's like, uh, she'll get these shots, but I'm getting everything else. I'm getting the meal. I'm getting everything else. Anyway, so this guy's just talking loud. He's just pounding down drinks. Pretty soon he's just Bleh. keeps like letting out <laughs> these burps. I'm not kidding you. The f- whole restaurant would stop and be like. Yeah, it was like look at him. It was just like it was so gross. People were trying to eat, and uh, it was just like it was just a slob. And uh, then at the end of it, you know, we're like tabbing out, and he goes uh, to get his tab, and the lady comes back, and she's like, "The card got declined." And he goes, "What? Uh, well, well, why'd you put all the food on mine?" <laughs> and it's like we clearly heard him say that. Yeah. So then he's like, move all the food off. Just keep the shots. What? They move all the shots off. Still couldn't pay. Dude. The, yeah. His girlfriend oh. just ended up paying for the whole and thing. Honestly, I normally would feel really bad and just like, be like, I got their meal, you know, whatever. But the dude was burping constantly, like, like at like a middle school lunch table and <laughs> it completely ruined my appetite. I only ate half my food. Uh, and then we just walked out of there and Ben just goes, that guy needs to figure it out. <laughs> dude, it was a bad look. It was bad poor girl, girl, dude. I don't know what that girl's doing with him. <laughs> yeah, paying for all his shit. I don't give a fuck about the money, but dude, his manners, I'd never seen anything worse. Mm. Yeah, I, I thought he did it on accident. The first time I and let then it he slide. kept doing it. The yeah. first time I let it slide, but then yeah, then it was like he was showing off. He was just, uh, and I mean, they were large, loud burps. It kind of reminded me of that one time we were at that nice ass restaurant, and you did it, with Mike. <laughs> Mike. Yeah, that is, that's what I you was did like, it one time, yeah, and was, we were like, Mike. I was what waiting are for you it, doing? and then I was like, Yeah, my bad, my bad. But I don't, and also, yeah, like as someone who finds farts really funny, I don't find burps super funny, and that really? one was like a one time, three couple times thing. Also, burps almost always smell, so you definitely want to get out of the way of that. It just ruined my whole meal, and I got yep. like a large portion of wings. I couldn't even eat them all. I was pissed. <sighs> So sad. Couldn't even bring him home. Drop an L in the chat for Siege. <laughs> yeah, that guy won that that one. <laughs> won that battle. Ultimately lost. <laughs> Walked out feeling real good about himself. Because yeah. those guys didn't even enjoy dude, he their He cleared food. out. Like, he cleared out the bar, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, people were leaving. Beat ups were, like, fucking, they were, like, people were repulsed. <laughs> so, you guys, uh, like, I've been a big fan of Barstool for a while. I think it's uh, it's a... Uh, a uh, platform that's very much here to stay. They do a lot of things now. They're always trying to do more. Some of it, super entertaining. The Caleb interviews are like amazing. Some of them are not good at all. But anyway, moral of the story is when, how many years is it going to take for people to stop commenting 
um, bitching about how it's not sports. Like, obviously, it's not going to be sports anymore. Mm -hmm. They post almost n almost no sports, and the comments are just nonstop. And it's like, I can't believe people are still wasting their time. Dude, they're upset bigger than that ever. Barstool Sports doesn't post sports. Well, no, they do post sports. They have like they 45 do. podcasts all dedicated to like each sport. Totally. It's just funny that I, I think they I, get mad if not every post right. is about and sports. And I just genuinely. It's like, how do you not get that it's never going to be that way? And it really never even was, yeah, was that way. I just, it, since I followed that's them. That's what I mean. Like I, yeah, five years. We probably, yeah, yeah like, follow, like followed them when they were like some pretty small. Let's say a couple hundred thousand. And and people were a little upset about it now. And it just still goes on. I'm picturing Barstool 10 years from now still posting like party clips or funny stuff. And people still be I think sometimes it's it. just a marginalized group of people that are loudest. against it they end up being the loudest so it seems that way because the people that like it are just they look at the post like <laughs> that's nice. true and then they just keep moving on but like yeah. the complainers oftentimes can be the loudest group even though they're like five percent i tell you what it's not making any difference because they nope. just got bought out for 550 million yeah but really or the, yeah well they last so pen bought the rest of it which i think was like 60 oh. percent the other 60 percent wow. and then it valued the company at 550 Wow, yeah, right. you know, I mean, like they're wildly That's successful, crazy. and the shit's not changing. And who, who, they're not changing their name. Would that make you happy? <laughs> they change their name to just, just barstool? barstool, dude. I think over the next ten years, we are going to see Barstool just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, yeah, as I mean, they same. continue to get more into like the gambling section of uh, you know society, where you're going to see more like sports books and bars, and just like I think sports gambling is just coming more acceptable and bigger being mm -hmm. that it's like getting legalized in each state and uh barstool is going to be at like the forefront of that movement. definitely definitely i don't know how, why how much did they get bought legal? out for Penn paid 388 million for 64 percent stake um that they did not already own they paid 163 in 163 million in 2020 for a 36 percent stake oh, oh, hold so on they, so what's dave portnoy own zero percent now of barstool I but he still works there don't think anything yeah must have sold oh. it all Damn. Interesting, and yeah, it's not sold, a. This maybe is a dumb question, but it's like not. It's not a public company. Like no pen is, is a no public. Pen, pen is yeah. okay. Yeah. Speaking of things that I don't, I don't really know. The internet's always evolving and stuff like that. But there's this new trend where it's like any Joe Schmo blow with a podcast just interviews a porn star and asks them, <laughs> in, or an OnlyFans girl, and asks them incredibly, <laughs> like. It's not even like interest in them. It's like, so where's the craziest place you got? You know, yeah. like it's just really weird and it always shows up on my Facebook feed. They're targeting you. That's what no, your cookies I don't are. really think so. It's just maybe <laughs> even just podcasts in general, but I just don't, I don't really think, <laughs> I don't think it's just podcasts. It's not, <laughs> yeah, it's not the guest. It's not, it's not anything to do with, but no, I mean like content. fucking Trevor Wallace does it and like all these people and it just, it's like this trickle down effect of like getting less and less and it's just, I feel like it's, it's cheap views. Yeah, it's cheap views is what I am yeah. trying to it's rinse spit yeah, out. a little bit. Yeah. I just, it's all like, the same. It's the same questions. It's the same concept. They're making a bunch of money and just like... I don't know. I've always just kind of thought of it as exactly that, cheap views. So put my foot down. No more porn stars. Well, Ryan, you're going to have to change your browsing history. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, that's why I've always been really thankful for the viewership we do have here because like... I'm picky. I'm picky as hell on the podcast I listen to. And to get into a new podcast is like damn near impossible. It's in tough. My yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's how like if having guests on is how you probably Help. typically grow your podcast unless you're already a, you know, a pretty big platform to begin with. Obviously, all the people that have came and found our podcast came from Seaboys right. TV. And, and they came from the YouTube vids. Happy, you know, that yeah, it it's went fantastic. well. But yeah, no. you're right. Like, we with, have a great audience. We didn't have our YouTube channel. There's just, this would be no. nothing. No, yeah, absolutely. They'd have no interest. But if, like, we want to grow this bigger than, you know, where we're at right now, having guests on is probably the only way you'd be able to do it. And then the you bigger know? we get, the cooler guests we'll be yeah, able exactly. to have. We see the comments about, like, you guys should interview, you know, all these people. You know, we're that's trying, a dream. We're like, trying. We, we've, we've been trying to get guests on. Like, we had two guests two different guests on the last two podcasts and i saw it didn't get as good of views which is weird to me yeah, i know and then i saw some people even comment like i don't like when you guys have guests i was like god damn it <laughs> but know, you can't people, please everybody. you can talk about it's burps fun every to, day it's fun <laughs> yeah. to do it's fun to do a little bit of both yeah. i think yeah. if you can yeah i and think it makes when both. we go on this rv trip i i really want to at least get three 
in the bag, mm -hmm. you know, with at some least. good people, at least. Yeah. You know, it's tough because we got such limited time. You got to keep moving. But and we typically do prioritize the YouTube channel over 100%. the podcast, which, you know, but this <clears> definitely is next in line. Yeah. I, I, I just love talking to guests and just learning what they're about because yeah. I'm just genuinely interested. Like I, I could probably sit down and have a conversation with any guy on the sidewalk and be pretty interested in what what they do. Yeah, if you and didn't listen to the last two, especially the Steve one, yeah, is so is so good. Yeah, there's definitely some some stuff to learn from that. It's, it's just like the growing process of of uh, continuing to get other guests. But I don't know. I I think people really like just listening to us sit down and chop it up because it's like mm -hmm. I don't know anyone we can have be fun. entertained by it. We'll keep trying our to yeah, be interesting. Keep doing interesting. Cool I, shit. I love it. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone who listens to this podcast, and then also. Everybody who watches the YouTube vids and just has supported us over the years because, I mean, you know, we wouldn't be here or doing any of this without you guys. So thank you so much. Yeah. Episode 69, getting a little books. emotional. Books. Sentimental the books. At the end. And on that note, thank you again for watching, listening, subscribing, commenting, and we'll see you for number 70 next week. Yeah. We might be on the road. We might Woo. be on the road. You're right. <laughs>